What's up guys and gals, it's your host with the most griever as always, bringing you guys some more Kangen Omega. Kangen Omega, chapter review 4, chapter 201, entitled The General. Who is the General? What is the General? How is the General? We're about to find that all out in this week's chapter. Now actually, unlike last week, which we still have potential for Koga to say no, so we're just going to move past that and we're not going to bitch, moan, and complain every single chapter until we get a definite answer on what the Koga learning the Nico style thing is going to end up as, right? So moving past that, I actually really like chapter 201 for a lot of reasons. Number one, Setsuna is comedy gold at the beginning of the chapter. He's just, he's stone-faced funny, not trying to be funny. It's that it's, it's just, it's funny to me. I don't know what you guys thought. Like, Omen's clearly very uncomfortable because he remembers the last couple of times he ran into this man. Do you remember? I'm going through a Kengen Asura read-through, and do you remember how tight this man's pants got? How wild his hair got every time he thought of Oma in the shower? Like, seriously, this... It's... It would be uncomfortable. It would be extremely awkward. It would be very uncomfortable. It's not borderline like, that's my stalker person. Ugh. You know? So the best part about this is Setsuna not reading the room whatsoever. And it's actually, I thought it was pretty funny. I didn't laugh out loud funny, but I just, Setsuna just sitting down like, everyone's like, why are you sitting next to me? And he's like, can't I? And he's literally like, Instead of sitting like as the third person on the table, you know, because it's a small table, right? So instead of sitting like four crossed in an X shape or whatever like that, or, or a plus sign, you know, he decides to like, just get, get a little cozy, get a little, hey, how you doing, Oma? Looking good. You've been working out those arms. Ooh, you know, like he's literally getting that close. And he's just like, can you not sit so close to me? He's like, can I not sit here? He goes, just give me some space, man. And it's like, that's the opening of the chapter. I'm a happy camper. It was actually quite funny. So, and even when it's remarked like, what are you doing in the inside? That kind of stuff. Setsuna just goes on to say, well, you know, I was born and raised here too, just like you. Is it so surprising that I came here? And in fact, he clearly has some intel. He's either done it himself or got intel or paid some intel to find out everything about Ryuki because he actually does feel bad about his part in Ryuki sort of swimming around towards a almost complete mental shutdown, a mental breakdown brought up in this very chapter um, about halfway through. So I actually kind of like this. That soon it's just like, well, first and foremost, like I'm the inside's my home too, technically and stuff. But he says, I am here to try to help uh, find Ryuki because they're going to kill him. Whoever it is, he goes, I don't know who exactly, but somebody's going to kill him. He goes, because Gaomukaku's definitely here. He's got safe houses everywhere. And the worm is here. And the worm is very unhappy. He goes, we've been... And they shortchanged this, and I'm sort of glad for that. They're sort of speeding this along. Because Setsuna has pretty much devolved everything. Maybe they sit, he hasn't said that Okoya was with them doing it and stuff. But pretty much spilled the beans to Koga and Oma. Saying, hey, uh, this is what Ryuki and I were doing for the last couple of years. Sorry! Forgive us? You know, sort of idea. Not really like that, but more so just in the sense of, yeah, so we were we were killing worms, and we killed a fuck ton, man. A literal fuck ton. And so Koga gets all pissed off, and like, I'm sorry, Koga, you stand no chance of Setsuna. Take your hands off the beautiful beasts. Your hands are dirty, and this man is beautiful. Completely bad chin insane, but beautiful. Keep your hands... You know, you can you can throw down with someone more on your level, and we'll get to that at the end of the chapter because I find it absolutely hilarious. But we 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 deal deal with someone more on your level. Don't be screaming. Don't be making a scene with someone who can literally just you know uh, knock your ass back down. So we do get basically the rest of the story there. Uh, Setsuna tells Oma and Koga pretty much everything about what they were doing. As said, since we are skipping that part, we don't know if you mentioned like everything like, oh, Okoya was with us, that kind of stuff. But it is what it is. Setsuna also brings out the fact that I actually never told him to do anything. He came, to, like, he, I taught him the Koi style, that's it. Like, he wanted to kill worms, and I 
I'm also killing worms for whatever reason, you know, Setsuna. Still a little bit of mystery surrounding why he's doing certain things. He's clearly after Tiger Nico, knows Tiger Nico is involved with the worm, so he's sort of worm worming his way, if you will, excuse the pun, worming his way into figuring out what the true intentions are to end the worm once and for all in his own way. So they're sort of their goals sort of coincided and when Ryuki found him and stuff like that, it was just like, hey. I'm killing worms, you want to kill worms with me? Cool, you know, but I never ordered him to do anything, I never forced him to do anything, however, I did recognize that he was, after the tournament in the Berserker Bowl, he realized, uh, maybe I should have tried, like, it's sort of funny, it's not said in this chapter, but it almost feels like Setsuna is sitting here going, just because I didn't order him to do anything, maybe I should have been more cautious and this coming from Setsuna of all people he's three sheets to the wind batshit insane himself so I kind of like the idea that he's feeling a little bit of regret a little bit of guilt that's what I'm gaining let me know what you guys think down in the comments but Setsuna is actually sitting here could is sitting here going yeah I didn't actually order him to do anything and he was doing everything himself but maybe I should have done more than just teaching the core style maybe I should have been paying attention to more attention to his mental state. Maybe I should have been easing up and maybe telling him, ah, you know what, we're not going out on a mission to the sewers to kill people tonight or something. Like, none of this is said, but I f sort of feel like it's implied because he's here in the inside at the same time. He knows about Ryuki's tracker. He's, you know, all that kind of stuff. And even says, because the day before he went back to the inside, Ryuki went and saw Setsuna and stuff. And, and Ryuki admitted, and... I don't know if people are going to like this, but I actually like it. Ryuki is actually recognizing I'm not in a good place. Uh, and once again, recognizing that, see a lot of people like, I feel like Setsuna did that off screen and that's really unfortunate. Setsuna sort of went batshit insane in the first manga and now that we've seen him back, he sort of, he's still a little crazy, but we don't know how he's recovered necessarily, if at all, or just gone further down the rabbit hole. Ryuki, on the other hand, which was something annoying about him, is that he didn't understand things, but now he's gotten so many sides to the same story, he now realizes, I can, even I can tell right now, that I'm mentally unstable. And we're sitting here going, no shit, of course you are. But, take, take a step back from Kengen Omega storytelling for, for just half a second, and think about the fact that most people who are crazy do not think that they're crazy. This is not bad writing as far as that goes. I am going to defend that a little bit because most people who, like, we're like, how the fuck do they think that way? Or why did they think that was a good idea? Or why do they just do the things like, have you ever watched a Dr. Phil episode or an Oprah episode? And just, um, maybe I'm getting too old or something because I know those shows don't really exist. Or Dr. Phil exists. Anyways, have you ever watched that and gone, how is this person, like, not in an insane asylum because people who are nuts don't think they're nuts and it takes actually a lot of work to get to that first step then they can start to recover the fact that Ryuki recognizes this I'm good with it it's obvious to us the readers but it's never obvious to the person it's happening to so it works out for me great that he said listen I can tell that I'm mentally unstable and if I continue if I don't make a big change if I don't figure my shit out I'm gonna have a literal mental breakdown. That's good. That's good character writing. You can argue that, oh, it's show, don't tell. Bullshit. Bullshit for something like this. We need, sometimes, wordless dialogue's great, but sometimes we also need to be told it. And it's good for Ryuki to say the words out loud so that we know, as a character, he has recognized it. And he's using Setsuna sort of as his as his ear right now and says, I need to figure out who's right and who's wrong. He said, I've gotten a lot of different perspectives from my grandfather, from Oma, from Koga, from Yama goddamn Gohan, and I'm gonna ask my grandfather about all the things I've learned and all the things people have said. I'm gonna confront him and say, look, here's what I found at the outside. What do you gotta say about all this? You know, sort of idea, right? So. This is actually good for Ryuki as a character. We sort of knew this was his intention going back to the inside, but it's nice to have this little scene. It's nice to have these little extra details, I would argue. And then we jump back to Setsuna, Oma, and Koga at the table, where uh, he, he actually has shifted to his proper side of the table. He's sitting down, not trying to squeeze in on Oma's chair, being like, how you doing? 
you know. So, uh, which once again, I still love that they opened the chapter that with that. I found that very uh, comical. Um, but yeah, so he recognizes, and they do acknowledge like Koga's still like doing his outbursts and stuff. Like, how do you know his GPS tracker went off, and how do you know this stuff? It's like, and almost just like Koga, just shut up. It's fine. Like Satsuna knows it might be a good thing that he knows, sort of idea because. They figured out that, of course, he's got at least 20 that Ryuki knew about. Safe house is all over the place because the name Gaomukaku, tons of enemies in the inside, makes total sense. Nothing needs to be said about that. So, this is why Setsuna has come here. There's a good chance that Ryuki did find Gaomukaku. That's why the tracker's off, and he's in trouble. That's why the tracker went off. Of course, they're here for the same re reason Setsuna's here. Setsuna's actually worried, and as I already stated at the beginning, probably feeling a little bit of regret or a little bit of guilt towards the fact that he doesn't actually want to create another him and he doesn't want Ryuki to be damaged and he thinks that maybe he should have done more or less because you can make an argument that he was almost he was a almost like a substitute teacher a substitute master in some regards and he has a certain level of responsibility when he took Ryuki under his wing to teach him the Koi style, he had a responsibility beyond just teaching him the Koi style. And I think that that sort of comes through in this chapter. What do you guys think? Maybe I'm reading too much and maybe I'm giving too much credit where credit isn't due, but that's seriously how I feel about this. I, I, I think that is really the case. Um, so yeah, so Setsuna does walk off and just gives him a final warning. The worms in the inside too. They're looking for Mukaku, they're looking for Ryuki. They'll kill the gals if they find them, so just giving you guys a heads up. Then we see, then we see, this is really cool. Um, okay, hopefully that fixed the lighting problem that we were just about to have. So anyways, uh, moving on to the next part of the chapter, we do get something that I found, it would, it's just really cool. And people gotta stop sleeping on my man, the Ice Emperor. People gotta stop sleeping on him because he's here. He's here basically doing just a light, a little light bre before breakfast sparring, after breakfast spar. Mikatsuchi Ri, the Lightning God, against the Ice Emperor Himoryu, and boom, 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 casually, casually, like their equals. I'm saying it right now. This man is far stronger. The community got to stop sleeping on this man. Okay, you can't, you can't say that everybody else has improved, and this man has not. Okay, I'm, I'm just not I'm just not really ready to hear it like we should have seen Haro versus him We should have seen that Absolutely because I would argue that Haro has improved dramatically under Seki's wing We didn't get to see it. So we're still saying oh, he's he's trash. Oh, he's a jobber. Oh, he's this we're seeing this man Spar with I would argue a one of the top tier fighters an a-class fighter, right? He's sparring with him, and we know that he has certainly improved. Training with the Wu Clan and Hatsumi Sen and all that, right? So they're doing the sparring. They're basically re, um, regurgitating pretty much what Setsuna told them, and they're sort of saying like, yeah, ah, man, the worm's here. Well, you know, I don't know. What should we do about this? It means we have no time to lose. We really got to get on with this and stuff. And they're just, they're sparring while having this conversation. And Koga remarks, and we're seeing the speed lines. They're doing this very quite quickly this is about the cloning blah 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 we see Retsuda saying you guys so you could argue that Koga even with the fist die uh, doesn't recognize when these guys are going really really light you know and it's like oh my god these guys are moving so fast even my eye can't keep up and stuff right even though he has the fist die we could you could make that argument but Retsudo, a man that was a candidate for the fang who Agito himself said should have been the next fang is standing there going, you guys are going pretty hard at it for a post-breakfast sparring match. This is from Retsuda. If it was just Koga's words, I would sit back and go, yeah, all right, Koga still MC, like, oh my God, face, doesn't know what he's talking about, right? But Retsudo also confirms this because Koga's standing there like, damn, I couldn't, Koga's basically sitting there going, damn, I couldn't do this. So people got to stop sleeping on this man. They're making that high-level exchange look effortless. He calls it a high-level exchange. Retsuro says they're going pretty hardcore for just a quick, you know, keeping their reflexes up after, after a nice, healthy bowl of oatmeal sort of idea, right? So, I mean, damn. Like, 
I, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm here for it because I think people sleep on him the same way people sleep on a lot of characters who either didn't get into the tournament or only or dropped out in round one. They don't get the right amount of respect they actually deserve. And uh, I, I'm here for it. If Sandro wants to make this man now that he's entered the inside, if he wants to highlight him and show, no, this man is not as weak as the community has believed for now two manga series, and he's going to showcase it, I'm here for it. I think we're getting the evidence right here. Because then uh, they get a message to go meet the general. Of course, the title of the chapter, the general. So they uh, end up getting to go there. They go to the, uh, the bombed out building. I think Koga remarks the place got attacked by a missile. And uh, then we get this guy. His design is absolutely insanely stupid looking. He looks so goofy. He's got like the headband like I'm cool. But he's got all this like wild hair and stuff like that. He's got a shitty mustache. And I'm just like... All right, well, whatever you're doing, I don't think it looks that cool. I think it looks like such a dork. It's it's kind of a goofy design. It's like he's trying to be blonde Rambo here or something. So I don't know. Um, but anyways, the general basically says, yeah, like we get a little bit of backstory about him. Pretty much, it, it sounds like he's a crazy person. I was like trying to make some good reason as to why he did this, that, and the other thing. He's like, yeah, I was in the army and my CO had it out for me. So I put more holes in him that even his mother wouldn't be able to recognize his corpse. It's like this dude is fucking Setsuna level nuts I, uh, I, I don't know I hope like he's just sort of a one and done character because a his designs sort of like laughable and I don't know what it is to me it just looks goofy and B he's clearly like oh I couldn't follow the chain of command so I shot a dude a dude was was a little mean to me so I put more holes in him than Swiss cheese Jesus, like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Like, I was hoping for some, like, oh, the CEO was doing, like, going against orders and doing these insane things and, like, hurting women and children and all this stuff. Like, I wanted maybe something, a little, maybe not that dark, but maybe something to justify the man had to escape to the inside. But no, it just sounds like he's the, you know, woo -woo. so is what it is. At the end of the chapter here, though, we do get... And here's what people are, I know, without even checking the discords and the reddits, I know that people are going to make fun of this, that uh, he goes, all right, so where's our guide? We got to get going here. The general says to uh, Himoro, says, hold your horses, Rio. I know, I, dude, I know you're strong. I know how strong you are. But I don't know about these guys. And I know people are going to take that and run. But there, there is another piece of evidence that... We've had like four in this chapter alone that this man is not the weakling that everyone, you know, treats him as. And I'm good with it. And uh, he wants to test out these guys. What's funny about this is that the weakest one in the party is clearly Koga. Like, I, I think that's evident. I think that's completely evident right now that out of, the, out of the five, who do you think is the weakest? How would you rank them? Because I would probably go Oma, either Retsudo Mikatsuchi, uh, then Ryo, then Koga. That That's the ranking I would give, but that doesn't mean that Himoro's weak. Koga's not that weak, but he's clearly a tier below all these guys. So, yeah. Either way, it's going to be Retsudo. We're finally going to see Retsudo fight, and it's up against this very tatted up guy. Uh, but since we don't know anything about this tatted up dude, it's going to be very hard to gauge how powerful Retsudo really is. This is going to more show, uh, more so, I suppose, showcase what style Retsudo is going to use going forward. Like, how does he fight? Is he a grappler? Is he a striker? Is he a Aikido? Is he uh, multi-talented? Does he use formless? What, like, what is his deal, right? Is he a boxer? Is he Muay Thai? Like, what is his deal? We know he was trained by Misasa, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he follows in his footsteps. So. Uh, it's actually quite funny because the general even says, not all of you have to fight, just show, bring up one of your fighters against one of mine, and if you win, you all get the escort. And so Retsudo volunteers and says, one of us is all we'll need, I'll take him. Because the general even says, if even one of you can beat this guy, I'll let you guys go. And I'm just like, this is just more for fun, because we haven't had a fight in a few chapters, I think, because clearly Ryo could just go up to the general and be like, dude, at least two of these guys are, because he's he's a fighter, but he's also humble enough to admit that, like Oma and Mikatsuchi are stronger than me. So he could just go up to the general and be like, dude, I'm vouching for him. These guys, you think I'm strong? Look at this dude. 
You know, he was born and raised in this place. He's better than me, okay? Um, but but then again, so is Rio. So it is what it is. But it is kind of funny that we're just getting this for a couple reasons. One, just to show off because we haven't had a fight in a few chapters, I feel like. And two, uh, because we really want to show off, finally, how does Red Pseudo fight. And I'm here for it. This guy had the potential to be the Fang. So, I mean... I don't know what you guys feel about this, but I really like this. I like this chapter. It had a lot of stuff. The fa flashback with Ryuki I thought made sense. It was good character writing. Uh, the beginning was just funny with Setsuna being Setsuna. I mean, that that's kind of funny. Setsuna has definitely grown on me. I feel like that's one character that has definitely changed for the better since Asura. We're expecting him to go full-blown, tight pants, craziness, wild with the big blush. We're expecting that. Um, and so when he's more just being normal, it's almost comical in, in, in the best of ways. So I kind of like it. Uh, and so he's definitely a good character for that regard. We're getting some actual respect on the Ice Emperor. And uh, then, yeah, and now we're going to finally get to see Retsudo fight next chapter. So I don't think this chapter did anything bad. I think it was well paced. Lots of stuff, lots of content, lots of things to talk about. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Sorry about the bad lighting halfway through a review, and of course, everything goes dark. It is what it is. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys back here next time for Kangen Omega Chapter 202. I'm actually looking forward to this one. So we'll see you guys back here next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.